if you're more of a visual learner. But what they've done here over the course of the last couple of weeks is embarrassing. It's disgusting. I hate it. As a Mariner fan, as somebody that believed strongly in the rebuild that was successful, they are absolutely tripping all over themselves right before they have the opportunity to cross the finish line. And instead of jamming on the thrusters, instead of just cruising to victory even, they've thrown it in reverse. This is a mess. This is a huge, huge mess that they've created for themselves. And while I understand the RSN issue, I'm not disagreeing with it. I think they're right. I think they banked on a whole bunch of money coming in that's no longer going to be here. That stinks. Tough. I I, I mean, like, so what? I'm a fan. I don't care about that. I don't care if your revenue stream left. The other teams in the league are still spending money. And maybe that's going to change at some point. Maybe you're ahead of the curve on this. Maybe you're finding out the problems with the baseball system before some of the other teams and their day of reckoning is coming sooner rather than later. Let's hope. Mm-hmm. Let's hope that's so you the can case. actually be ahead of it instead of in full-blown reaction That mode. may be the case, and I'm willing to open up my mind to that possibility. But if it is the case then you better adapt quicker to a new landscape, which means you probably are going to have to throw in some of your own money or else you've wasted everything you've built in the last couple of years, and you cannot let that happen. And thankfully, this doesn't have to be the end of the story. This doesn't need to be a complete dismantling of the Mariner organization by dumb radio show host here in the morning. It can be a message It can be a plea for help to spend your own money, to do whatever you need to do to make sure that you bridge the gap until you can find the next revenue stream to help you out. This you don't need to be the enemy here. You don't need to be the thing, the piece that everybody's mad at. You can solve this problem. And while I don't sit here and call for them to spend like the Dodgers and Yankees, I don't think they need to go crazy in free agency every year. I don't believe those things. I do believe that with the $30 million they've saved by moving backwards, that you now need to add an additional $30 million to it or whatever the number okay. is to actually get over this hump. Can you answer this question? I don't know if you can or not. And not even like, you know, relationally or otherwise, but just can you even answer the question that I'm sure many are driving around thinking right now? And that is, does this ownership group, ownership group have that money to spend? Does Larson have that money to spend? Does John have that money to spend? Do all of the minority owners, like all of the everybody always, it's, and John, it's kind of like this whole Jamal Adams conversation, right? Like, hey, you put yourself out there, you're going to take it on the other side. And John is the one that is the, the front facing of this ownership group. He is the one, even though he is not the largest shareholder and percentage owner, he is the one that has to take all of these arrows and his name is attached as owner of these Mariners. When in reality, Chris Larson owns a bigger share it is then John Stanton, and then it is a litany, as I understand it, yeah. of a lot of other smaller minority owners. So do I, they even have the capital and the ability to cash call and go spend what you're, what, what you're asking? Well, that's a good question. Do I think that all of the 15 or 18 owners have that money? No. Do I think that the guys at the top do? I think so, but I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that question. Certainly, I don't have access to any of their books to tell you what kind of money they have. I I guess what I would say is I don't care. Mm -hmm. If you're going to own a sports franchise and it goes through this kind of a problem, then you need to find a way through it. Like, if winning is the most important thing which John has stated on multiple occasions, and I believe him. I believe John truly wants to win. This is what it takes right now to win. We've run that promo a whole bunch of times from Stacey Rost, which I think is brilliantly put together, both in terms of her thought process. That's why she's up for broadcaster. Well, you're absolutely right. It is a brilliant, brilliant thought from Stacey. You've heard it all over the station in the promos, where she says, hey, Just because somebody else can lose weight just by exercising, that doesn't mean you can. 
Maybe you need to diet. Maybe you need to do X, Y, and Z. Everybody's body is different. Mm-hmm. It's a great promo, both because of her brilliant ability to to make a, a, a an understandable and relatable analogy, and because she's absolutely right with what the Mariners, uh, the situation they put themselves in. She's 100% right. Right now, the call is for more money. That may not be the call next year. It may not have been the call last year or the year before. Maybe it was, and we can all debate that. But right now, I would say it's almost inarguable. You're hearing it from your manager. You're hearing it from your general manager, president. Your you're hearing it from your best players and leaders. You're hearing it from your fans. You're hearing it from the agents in the game. You're hearing it from other players around the league. You're hearing it from respected members of the media. I'm not including myself. I'm talking about the national folks like Passan and Morosi and Rosenthal and all of the other guys who have now said it. Who else needs to say it? Who's left? This is the only thing that gets you through this problem, short of luck, short of hope, and hope's not a strategy. I am not the guy who sits here and rails day after day and says spending money is the only way to win in baseball. It's not. There's lots of ways to win in baseball. But the situation you put yourself in right now today calls for action. And I don't know how many other people can say it. I don't know how many other signs you can look for. Brock, you're a religious guy. You know that story about the guy who falls in, who, uh, who, who's told that there's going to be a flood? Mm-hmm. You know that story? Mm-hmm. Right? He hears a radio report that there's going to be a flood, and he says, no, nah, right. no, nah, I'm good. Yep. God will save me. I'm mm-hmm. going to stay here. Mm-hmm. And then the helicopter, like all these different people come, yep. right? And he keeps ignoring them and saying, ah, God's going to save me. And then he dies in the flood. Yep. And he goes up to wherever he goes to, and God says to him, what are you doing here? And he says, well, you said you'd protect me. He says, I did. I sent you a radio. I sent you a weather warning. A I helicopter. sent you a guy to help you. You yeah. didn't take any of the help I offered. Everyone is telling you this. And if you don't accept the help, you got nobody to blame but yourself.